Hello and welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we, we saw a little bit about how to use parameters in your reports. And we looked at how to pre-configure some values and then pass it on to your report. But most of the times what we saw was that we just used one parameter. So in this lecture, let's try a couple of more things. So let's go ahead and just uh, run the same thing. So what we did was that we had a data source and we are passing a parameter in this particular data set. And that is what is basically driving the whole report, right? So let's, um, let's basically do one thing. Let's actually create two parameters instead of one. So I'm just going to write and territory ID equal to territory ID. So once I click OK, in our parameters pane, you should see two of them, right? Um, let's go ahead and, and run this. So you, you, you see that one of the parameters is actually pre-filled. And that's because in the previous lecture, we actually saw how to uh, away, how to gain values and how to insert these values into uh, a particular drop down uh, when the report actually loads so after i choose say canada i need to supply a territory id as well now i don't remember what territory ids are belonging to canada but i'll just try territory id 3 all right so it doesn't have any values so let's do this let's quickly um run this i'm going to cheat a little bit let's take this out and let's run this all right so us has territory id one two three four and all right so this looks good so if we try to run this report and select us and say territory id 2 it should actually filter oops us territory id 2 it should filter for that particular row now one of the things that i wanted to show you over here is definitely how to use multiple parameters you can keep adding more and more parameters over here um, but what i would like to have is once i choose us um, Territory ID should also be pre-populated, right? With only the values that belong to US. So it's kind of a cascading effect, right? So if I choose Canada, only the territory IDs that belong to Canada should be shown over here. And the way you can do that is actually similar to how we did country region code, right? So what we're going to do over here is I'm going to create a new data set and I'm going to call this as um, param uh, territory ID. By the way, this is a naming convention, um, you know, I, I generally like, you know, to prefix with the word param so that you actually know what all data sets are actually driving the parameters. So it, 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 it becomes really very easy when you have like 10 to 15 parameters in a report and it becomes really easy to see uh, which of those data sets you need to debug in case there are issues. So I'll go ahead and just use one of the data sets that I created and what I'm going to do over here is in a similar fashion, I'm going to write a query and I use the sales territory. So I'm going to use the same uh, table and I'm going to just get the territory ID um, where, uh, let's see. Yeah. So where country region code equal to at the rate country region code. So basically what we are saying is to get the sales territory, you need to pass in some parameter and that happens to be country region code. So let me click OK. And what this is going to do is it is going to expect the value of country region code from this parameter. And this parameter expects value from the data set that we created. So it's kind of a cascading effect. So let me show you how that works. 
So you see that the first parameter that will get fired over here when I run the report is the country region code and it will actually derive values from this query because we have wired up that data set to that particular parameter. As soon as I select something, next what will happen is territory ID will derive values from this data set and this data set has a where clause which is dependent on the previous filter, right? So it will basically show you only that, only those values. So if I double click territory ID and say available values, I'm going to say that the available values should come through the territory ID data set that we created. And that's it. One more modification that we need to do over here is, um, actually we did this. So, uh, you know, once we fill in both the, uh, once we choose both the values from those parameters, those values should be passed on to this particular query. And that's what will get displayed in the report. So I think we have set everything over here. Now, if I click preview, um, the value refers to non-existing country region code. Okay. So one thing that we have to be careful is this is case sensitive. So I am going to quickly make this change country region code, and then hopefully we should be fine. All right, so if I click preview, that worked. So let me go ahead and select US and then it actually just populates the values that belong to US. So if I select say Canada, this should actually show only values belonging to Canada. And when I click view report, it should only show that particular row. Right, so this is how you can actually create cascading parameters. So all we have done is we have just created multiple data sets where the third data set is dependent on the second one, second one is dependent on the first one and so on and so forth, right? So you can you can actually create a more user-friendly report so that uh, you don't have to always expose, um, you know, a text box where you keep the user guessing what values to enter and sometimes rubbish values comes through. So this will actually clean up all those things and provide a more streamlined experience. So that's about parameters, highly customizable. In the next lecture, what we are going to see is we're going to take the same report and we are going to play with some expressions, right? So expressions are statements which allow you to custom customize pretty much anything. So we'll have a look at that in the next lecture. Thank you.